On his way to Bethel, brother, Elisha was surrounded by a few... Boys. Elisha, on his way there, was surrounded by youths. You couldn't make this up. You are a perfect prop. Once they got around him, and they started mocking and shouting and jeering, saying, take your message away from here. Take your message away. Talk about it right now. Jesus Christ comes down and he says, look, I have, because I made you, because I love you, I want you to have that relationship like a father, son, or father, daughter. Don't and get I'm too no close. Yeah, you're acting like one. Thank you. What's going on guys? I hope you're well. So I have just pulled up into the gate car park in Newcastle. It's Saturday night. It's about seven o'clock. And uh, seven o'clock on a Saturday night in Newcastle means only one thing. It's probably going to be lively, especially when you're going to Newcastle to preach the gospel. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I've been praying about it. I've been reading the scriptures and the message that the Lord gives us is actually a little bit of an obscure one there's some messages and some texts that you don't often see people preach but the one that he's put on my heart to share with this city tonight is the account of elisha in second kings 2. Um, if you don't know the story really quick elisha is on his way to bethel and he's surrounded by a group of youths basically a long story short elisha curses them and they are mauled to death by bears there's a little bit more context to the story but I'm not going to avoid what the Lord's asked us to speak. I'm going to be fearful. I'm going to preach it and see what the Lord will do tonight. And um, thank you to everybody who loves us, who supports us, who prays for us. I'm going to go meet Wesley and see what happens tonight. May the Lord be glorified. <laughs> on our own goodness we are trusting in the goodness of jesus christ not in whatever we think life is about not our own good works you see many people think that life is meaningless that we come through random chance of you through the process of chance single i think what is your relationship then single as you see, this is a question you should actually consider. What is your status before God? So, do you believe in God? Yeah, I do. You do? And what do you think God is? Do you think he is pleased with you or angry with you? Pleased? Why is God pleased with you? Why not? Do you think you've done anything that God would be angry with you? I stopped believing in God when I realized it was just a job backwards. G-O-D, G-O-D. So, because of an English spelling, you dis uh, disbelieved in God. Well, that is a foolish argument. You know, the Bible says, only a fool says there is no God. And you, to say, you discredit God because of the spelling of it backwards. Yeah. You'll have to give an account for every word, sir. You know that God says there's the day that is appointed for man to die once and after that judgment. And your foolish words, you'll have to give an account to God. And I just pray that you repent of those words and call upon his mercy. And I would like to thank everyone for coming. Like Enjoy your night. Talk about Jesus Christ. Do you believe that he is God? No. No, I no. Don't. Not at all? What do you believe? I don't believe there's a single God at all. You don't believe in God? No, not at all. Okay, how do you come to that con conclusion? Right, so the creator in itself. Why would we believe there's a creator? Why would we believe there's a creator? Humor me here. Yeah. See this? Yeah. It would be absolutely foolishness to say that this monument built, didn't build itself. Well, no, men, 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 men built that. Yeah, absolutely, men, men built it. And you see this car over here, I can't see what it is from here, but... Well, you it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a German car. It's a German car, so let's guess that some Germans made it. Yeah, yeah. So wisdom would say that. And then we can say that, and that's, that's scientific, it's factual, yeah. it makes sense. And then we're going to get to the most complex machine we're completely different. We can't study the, the depths of it. Yeah. And we're going to say, although that was erected by men, yeah. or that was made by Germans, yeah. this thing here just happened by accident. Because it would make sense as a creator. So what, what bit didn't happen by accident? Okay, so what I'm saying to you, mate, is in the beginning, 
yeah. was God. The Bible says that Alpha in the Omega yeah. created. In the beginning, so God that's created. The, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So that's my stance. What's your stance? My stance would be like, well, nothing, well, right, nothing happened and then something happened. Yeah, so nothing and nothing equals something. So nothing and nothing equals something. And is that rational? Is it sensible? Is it scientific? Well, it's not scientific to be like, well, is it possible? Happened. Is it possible? What, that nothing? Nothing and nothing creates something. Because this it, is the atheist stance. Well, it's not nothing and nothing equals something. So what is it? As a rational man who has encountered Jesus Christ, but we'll get to that point afterwards. So whether, 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 Because what you were doing, you want me to get off this point because I think you're stumbling a little bit on it. Let's go back. So you've encountered Jesus Christ. Yeah, we'll you? get to that in a minute. So no, what, no, let's go back to that. Yeah, I'll okay, stand on Genesis. You stand on, I don't know, probably Dawkins nothing, or something. Nothing. nothing. Mate, you're saying you stand on nothing. Correct. You believe nothing. Correct. That's not true. No, no, 100%. I believe nothing. You can't believe nothing if you come to me because you believe that there isn't a God. That's something. No, I believe there's no... I believe you don't... The God that you believe in, I don't believe that. This is a really deep conversation for a Saturday night, I think. Have you had, no, had, 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 had a couple of pints? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Because okay. it goes better when we haven't, but I'll, I'll stick I with know, it. I know, so it's better if Yeah, have, okay, mate. So what I'm saying is what mankind tries to do is it strip away any... Reality, any chance that there's a deity who is above them and in control. Because if that's the case, we're not top of the food chain. That's why people rebel against the Bible. That's why. Because well, the, Bible, the, the Bible is full of Okay, you said you believe nothing, but you believe the Bible's full of expletives. So right, tell okay, us why. Right, okay. Well, you brought up a Christian. 100%. Yeah. I'm, I am a Catholic. I'm, I'm a, it doesn't sound like it, Andrew. I'm a Catholic. I have been brought up as Catholic and 100%. So just just so keep on track of the conversation, you're a Catholic yep. Yep. who believes that the Bible is a load of rubbish, Correct. who believes that there's no God and you believe nothing. Correct. But you're a Catholic. I'm a, Catholic. I'm a Catholic in the same way that Jewish people are Jewish. It, it's because. So you inherited a religion, basically? Um, yeah, you yeah. Inherited religion is just something. You, people used to say back in the day, Andrew, that if you were born in England, and you're British and white, that you're a Christian. Correct. This isn't what this says, it isn't what Jesus says. What's the, this? This is the I Bible. Know, what, no, but what Bible is it? Okay. Could you tell us what Bible is it is? It's the Word of God. No, no, what Bible is it? It's New King James. No, the New Word King James. Oh, Six. so the New King James. Andrew. So, New, New King. King James. So, what, what was King James? What does he do? It doesn't matter about King James. No, no, the... no. Let's go back. What did King James this... do? do one no, do? no, no. So, yes, why, yeah. so okay. why is that an issue? So, what, what so if learned... you can't go back and go talk about King James, why is that not an issue? Okay. I'll tell you why I can't talk about King James. Let's speak. Why? Go on, Let, yeah. Yeah. Why I won't speak about King James? Because King James is a very, very, very small point in the reason that I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about Jesus. Now, what you're doing is, yeah. I'm willing to talk to you, but yeah. you're picking little things because oh, the, 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 shocking, the thing that you're standing on is really, really wonky. And I think you know that, even though you've had a few to drink. Now, instead of getting no, to the no, heart no, of the no, issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's why I'm not going to say anything else to you. Because, just, oh, so just to clarify, so the is... You Stop came here, argument. you said the Bible's full of rubbish, okay? Well, it is, obviously. Yeah, you confirmed that. You said you believe nothing, even though those two things contradict. Then you said you were a Catholic. I think I'm a fool to continue this conversation with a drunk man when there's so many more common people to talk about right. Jesus. Right. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to preach. You can stay, right. or you can go. Okay. But so Newcastle, we are here today, or tonight even, all right, brother? To preach the message of the gospel with those with ears to hear. You don't want now, the what we see you don't in Newcastle you don't want the is this. We see you many other things. We see so want, much opposition, brother, you don't want the to something that you doesn't exist. The, you don't want the we get so mad over you something do that doesn't exist. What the Bible says oh, that you do not cast your purse before a swine. But when we see People get really, really bold when it comes to Jesus. Let's talk about they it. get so bold when it, it comes to Jesus. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. When we got here Let's early, talk about it right now. Jesus Christ comes down Let's and he says, it. Look, I am the way, the it. truth, Let's and the talk life. About it. Let's talk 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 about it
Girls, can I ask you a question? If you don't believe in something, do you get furious over it? I don't get no. furious. If you don't believe in something, does it cause you to shout and yell and go on like that? No. So what we're going to do here is we're going to preach because in the Bible, in 2 Kings, we hear of somebody called Elisha. Now Elisha was mentored by a guy called, not Elisha, not Elisha, is that you? Elisha. Okay, well Elisha, I'm talking about Elisha. Now Elisha wanted a double portion of what Elijah had. I just want more of that anointing that you've got so I can go and I can be a prophet to the people of the land. Back in those days, a prophet literally spoke the word of God. The prophet would go as God's spokesperson. So when Elisha got the double blessing, when he got the double portion, he was anointed to go as God's prophet for that time to preach the message of repentance. Ladies, you know what repentance means? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you really know what repentance means? Repentance means turn from going that way, have your mind change and turn and go that way. Okay, but that way, where does that lead? Does it lead to Jesus Christ? Does it? Does it? I hope it does. Repentance means to turn from your sin and turn to Christ. Turn from going to hell and go to life in Christ and Christ alone. Now, there's some things in the Bible that this guy shouting, it's a load of rubbish, it's a load of rubbish. And some things I can actually say, if you get it out of context, it's going to be very difficult to understand. For example, Elisha had to travel the path of Jericho to Bethel. Jericho was well known this path to be full of thieves, robbers, tough times, yeah? Now Bethel was a holy place, boys, but what they'd done is they turned away from God. And what they started doing was worshipping many, many other things. Many false gods. People in Bethel. They turned away from God, the one true living God, and they worshipped other things. They worshipped Baal. Now why it's important that we talk about this here tonight is because, guys, we worship many, many things. People say, I don't believe in God, but you worship many things. We worship sex, we worship money, we worship celebrities, we worship ideologies, we worship loads of stuff. We pour out our worship on things. Elisha was on his way to preach, look guys, you've got to turn back, you've got to come back to God, you've got to go to where you belong because all of this stuff is fleeting. All of this stuff doesn't matter. The things that you're building your life on are not going to last. So on his way to Bethel, brother, Elisha was surrounded by a few... Boys. So again, this is perfect. So what happened was, right guys, Elisha, on his way there, was surrounded by youths. You couldn't make this up. You are a perfect prop. Thank you very much. Elisha was surrounded by youths. Now what the youths did was they got around him and they started mocking and shouting and jeering, right? What they said to him, they said, go on up, Baldy, go on up, Baldy, get out of here, we don't want your message. Kind of like this. They said, look at you, you're bald, why don't you go up there with your mentor? Why don't you go up there? Because we don't want your message. That's exactly what they're talking about. What happened there after that, brother, was the Lord gave them judgment. They didn't want God. They were mocking, they were jeering, they didn't want to hear a thing from God. So God gave them what they deserved. They got justice, they got their punishment, and they were mauled by bears. People say, why would God allow young people to be mauled by bears? But the, well, well, not this guy, because he said he loves God. And this is a question. There's two ways, guys. See, you can be in the crowd of these people, the crowd of yous mocking and jeering. And you can be in the people who want nothing to do with God, saying, shut up, prove it, go away, whatever you were saying before. Exactly like this guy. You can be like this guy. Or you can be like this guy who is walking or wants to walk with God. No, because you know what happens? This is exactly what happens. They mock and they laugh because they don't recognize a good thing. I think everybody has their own relationship with God. So everybody can have a relationship with God, brother. They can. But what happens is people do not want God. They would rather be in the crowd mocking and jeering, saying, take your message away from here. Take your message away. Take your message away. See, you know you do that. 
you, they say the Bible's not true, but it's unfolding right in front of their faces. Elisha, he didn't shout, he didn't battle, he didn't bawl. What Elisha did, he turned to him and he pronounced a curse on him. And he let God deal with him. If you reject him like this guy and like these guys and the, guy, the girls who were here before, the natural thing is going to happen. God is going to give you what you deserve. Yeah. Yeah, answer, answer, sorry, ask your question. What's uh, God's uh, drug policy? What, what's that like? God's drug policy is do not be drunk or uh, out of your mind or anything, but be sober-minded and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That makes sense to you? Yeah, no. Good. That's his drug policy. So whoever you are, wherever you are, no matter what you've been told, no matter what you've been preached at in this world, because many messages are preached to you in this world, not just from me, that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. But the problem is you do not want to admit that you're a sinner. You do not want to admit that we've done things wrong. We'd rather shout the message down. We'd rather worship many other gods that kind of tickle our ears a little bit, tell us nice things. We want things that are told us to nice and accepting and loving, but actually, you know what isn't accepted? God does not accept sin. And the reason God does not accept sin, Newcastle, is because he's holy, he's righteous, and he's good. Now, I don't know if you know this, but God is holy, righteous, and good. But if he's all loving, shouldn't, shouldn't he love people who sin? He does love people who sin. Yeah. And that's the message, isn't it? Because do you know how God showed his love for people who sin? Yeah. How? By free will. You've got, you've got a free will, but how did God show his love for you, 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 even if you're high, not high, whatever? How did God... On me a good day. Sanctity of life. He died. What? Yeah. Who did? Yeah. Jesus, that's right. So in this way, God showed his love for you, for you, for you, for you, for this guy, for me. This is the core of the Old Testament, the back page of the Bible, right in the center of it. It talks about Christ. If there's no Christ, there's no good news. Now what religion tells you to do, guys, is to be good. Be a good person. But actually what the Bible says is, the standard of good is so high, it's so, so high, that we'll never attain it. It's done. What Christ did was, he did that for us. You can't stop sinning because you're a sinner. By default, right, we sin. It's like saying, don't go and press the big red button. Someone's going to go and press the big red button. We're sinners by nature. And we don't like talking about that. It's true. God has to punish sin, no matter what it looks like. No matter where it is, no matter who's done it. Because he's good. Just like if we brought the law here, a good judge would give you a punishment. A holy, eternal judge must punish us. But what he did was, he, pun he, he satisfied his punishment in Christ. Jesus took it for you. And why did he do that? Even though you were mocking, even though he didn't want to know him, he wants to know you. And he did that, he gave his life for you. Would you die for somebody? You would? Well, that's good, it's very honorable. But what Jesus did, how he died for you, is he took a cross, the most painful punishment in the world, and he bled and he died and he was, he was mocked. You've seen it here tonight, he was mocked. He had a crown of thorns forced on his head. They spat on him, they mocked him. But what he was thinking about was forgiveness for all. So when you believe upon him, you put your faith in him, you stop trusting in these things. You stop, because everybody trusts in something. Everybody wants an identity somewhere. What God is saying is, I know how far away you are. I made you. I know the numbers of the hair on your head are lack thereof, baldy, we will talked about before. But because of that, even though you've been and done that, all are welcome at Jesus Christ's table. But what you have to do is, you've got to drop the stuff. What the Bible says is, you can study and you can study and you can study and you should, because the truth doesn't mind being tested. Right? It doesn't mind. In fact, it tells you that the study to find yourself approved. Seminaries, colleges, whatever, do it, yeah? Please do do it. Study who Christ is. But at some point, you're going to get to a point where you're going to have to walk it by faith. No matter what you believe in, you've got to walk it by faith. And Jesus says, because I made you, because I love you, I want you to have that relationship like a father, son, or father, daughter. That's what it is. The Bible says those who are in Christ cry out, Abba, Father, because they're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's, that's why we say, I can't deny it. When the world's going the way it's going, it's not getting, it's not getting better, it's not good, it's not good at all. These pages keep on turning. And it tells us what's going to happen. And what's going to happen is that we're going to give an account for whatever we've done. Look how diverse and different everybody is here. The world loves stuff like that. But before God, all is laid, all, all laid bare. All is laid bare before him. Nothing's hidden. 
you can put a filter on your Instagram, you can go to certain places and tell people how great you are, you can tell your grandma she thinks you're great, no, you're, a, you're not a sinner, your grandma says you're lovely, but before God who loves you the most, you've done the most against. But Newcastle, look, the Bible says God opposes the proud, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He says to love your neighbours as yourself, love your enemies, pray for your enemies. Does the world say that? No. It says to the last shall be first and the first shall be last. But the, this world is crab and crab and the barrel just get to the top no matter who you hurt. The world is broken and upside down and we can laugh and we can jeer, but it only, only confirms what he's saying. Guys, God is good. He's holy. It doesn't matter what stereotypes you believe to confirm your bias, it really doesn't matter. But what does matter is who he says he is. And we can know who he is through Jesus Christ.